Welcome everyone to another episode of Around the Block Talk. Today we have with us Mr. La- Mr. Lars. He is a lawyer and an expert in the domain of blockchain regulation. And we're very happy to have you with us today, Mr. Lars. And looking forward to what you have for us. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, also for having me invited me at your podcast. Thank you, Lars. So uh, today, Lars is coming from a background of regulatory and legal aspects around this industry. And it would be great to understand from him what are what are the regulations around this, what are the challenges around this, and what is the way forward for this uh, new and emerging industry. Yeah. So let me first say that I think regulation is something that can only be good for 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 the blockchain uh, environment. Um, we have seen that if we have some clear rules then um, also the, the, the entrepreneur and the project uh, um, know what they can do, they know what can they, they cannot do. It creates more certitude and that's helped a lot uh, in establishing a good um, uh, environment within uh, the blockchain space. Um, I think everybody of us has seen that uh, there is a, a, a wave of regulation incoming we seen this in Europe, we seen this in, in, in the States, we seen this a little bit everywhere in, in the world. Um, maybe if I can share um, my experience um, in Switzerland, where I'm based, um, I can really say that this is a positive experience. So uh, Switzerland was one of the first country to regulate the blockchain ecosystem and to create some clear rules about what can be used a blockchain for. For example, um, we indicate in the law that, uh, I mean, we put the tokenization of assets in the law. So now in Switzerland, you can decide if you want, for example, to issue a share of the company, to issue it on a paper so- form, to have it digitalized in the traditional system, or to have it in the form on, of a token. We don't need to draft uh, agreements uh, where we are not sure if they can be implemented and enforced. Uh, we have it now in the law, and it will be very. It's very easy in Switzerland to tokenize, share, and all the kind of, of assets that are brought to a really wide approach. So the, the tokenization of share is slowly becoming once a standard in Switzerland. And by having all, um, I mean, you can imagine that if we have all kind of company which tokenize the shares, then also the ecosystem can really grow on a healthy way. So I think this is a great example of why the regulation in the blockchain space is something positive. Um, I think we have also to spend two words about money laundering because that is where the regulation is is, is mainly going. Um, I fear we cannot avoid it. Um, regulation, uh, money laundering regulation is something a little bit more complicated. And I think we, we have also to do some educational, uh, there, there are some educational action that we have to, to, to take because we have to inform and educate the government and the regulator on how to do money laundering in the uh, crypto space. It's maybe something different than in the traditional space. And it will be a little bit difficult for us if we have the traditional laws applied to the crypto space, feasible, but not, not, it, it, it's not, the, 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 I will say, the, the, the best practice for the crypto space. And here it's our part to educate the regulators and to find a good regulation that can apply for the, for, for the ecosystem. Right, indeed. So uh, in Switzerland, what is the kind of response you, we ha- you have from the regulators in terms of understanding the blockchain technology and in terms of understanding crypto? And because uh, there's a lot of gray areas in this industry today, it's uh, the, the very definition of many things like cryptocurrency or digital assets, it's not very clear to everyone. So what is the response of the government? How is the government receiving this? And what are the steps they take? Um, 
I think we have there are different levels of of, of government of understanding. Um, at the federal level, so the lawmaker, I will say they are really blockchain enthusiasts. So they they are writing laws uh, uh, concerning blockchain, which are very innovative, and I will say very good for the, for the practice. Um, the regulator, so the financial regulator. They have now they created a fintech department. So there is really a department which is um, it works only uh, for a fintech uh, related um, um, institution, which is mainly blockchain. And you can go to them, speak with them, obtain no action letter if you need one, or uh, speak about authorization that you may have or required. And they are very open, I must admit, to, to discuss the situation. Here is the educational part I was discussing before that come in place. So we sometimes we still need to explain them what the centralization is, how the smart contract works. But they are, I mean, they are open to understand and also to find to apply um, the laws which are designed for a centralized world into a decentralized ecosystem. So as I was saying before, sometimes that doesn't match. But the regulator is open to to try to find a solution. A little bit more difficult, uh, we found it with the tax authorities. So tax authorities, I mean, they want to tax. <laughs> that's that's their point. Um, and we are trying to let them understand, for example, that if I I'm get paid in token for a new project, well, it will be difficult for me to, to even if, especially if the token is locked, and now, right now in Switzerland, you have to pay the taxation before, I mean, as soon as you receive the token, even if they are locked. And we think that this is not correct because, I mean, the token could go to zero if uh, the project is during the locking period, if the project is not strong enough. And of course, I don't want to pay taxation on something that um, I could eventually at the end own nothing. Um, so we are here again educating the tax authority to let them understand that the, with the locking period you have to find another kind of solution. Um, by the other way, they are very good in um, when we discuss about receiving payment in Bitcoin. They accept it; it's not a problem at all. Or also the VIT. I had right now a case uh, with a mining farm. Um, uh, that was mining outside of Switzerland, and we had a discussion with the VIT authorities, and we find a very good and practical way um, for taxation of VIT, where 90% of the business is not taxed, and 10% only is 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 taxed by 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 VAT. So I think that um, my experience is again we can discuss with the regulator; it's really good. They, they want also to learn, they want to understand what decentralization is, and it's half of ourselves, I mean, as the advisor, but also the project that are in Switzerland, to educate the authorities uh, to let them be on your part and not uh, fighting them. Right, indeed. So uh, also, in terms of uh, ICOs, in terms of uh, coin offering in terms of selling cryptocurrency, what are the kind of regulations around that? Is that, can that be done uh, with with ease or some challenges on the way? Well, Switzerland is one of the best places in the world to do token offering. Uh, we really have a lot of projects which are launched from Switzerland. And again, the, 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 the reason why a lot of projects are choosing Switzerland is that we, because we have a clear legal uh, framework. Uh, so we can do ICO and token offering from Switzerland. And normally, what we, when we start a new project, what we do is, is what I call the workshop, where we look at all the legislation that may apply, and we decide if to this project is legislation apply or not. Uh, long story short, um, if you do our token offering in Switzerland, you can, uh, you can have the case where um, the token is a utility token and uh, it is not a financial um, instrument and therefore you can do the token offering without any kind of authorization or having the token with a payment token and then you need what we call the anti-money laundering authorization which is already something that is not so complicated to obtain or um, if the token is a security then we need a prospectus and depending of the kind of marketing that you do, you do and the kind of um, target that you are 
targeting, so retail investor or professional investor, uh, the requirement for a prospectus may be very low or very high. So uh, normally when, when there is a new pro uh, project, we do this workshop, we discuss all these issues and we decide together and we design together a token which is compliant with the law with the normally with the less uh, requirement possible. So everybody wants to issue the token without authorization and we try to do it. But if you want to issue a, a payment token and we cannot find any other solution, then okay, we go, we get the AML authorization and we issue the token. Right, indeed. So apart from uh, tokens, we have digital assets such as NFTs and uh, this entire category of assets. So what kind of recognition does government has? And uh, is it is it very is it easy for general population to own and uh, store their digital assets? Um, I mean, the, the, the token taxonomy in Switzerland is more or less like the rest in the world. So you have the the payment token, the utility token, and we call it the asset token, which is in reality is more or less the, the, the security token. Um, the, the payment token is a token that which is used for payments, as the name says. So if you want to do a token which um, is used to pay anybody else than the issuer, then is a payment token, and then we have the money laundering, um, the money laundering issues that, 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 that are applying, so you need probably an authorization. However, if you do a token which is used only for pay the issuer, so let's say that I have a platform and say, okay, I'm offering my services to this platform and I accept my token to be paid in and I am the only one accepting the token, then this is a utility token. And if you use a utility token, then it's like a voucher and you don't need any, um, any authorization, any kind of authorization. Also, the other way around, if, you, if it's a security token, as I said before, you need a prospectus. Now, you, you, you spoke about NFT, so non-fungible tokens. Um, non-fungible tokens are usually non-securities because they are non-fungible, of course. And therefore, you, do, you can do a lot of things with non-fungible tokens. Uh, we are right now, using non-fungible tokens to tokenize assets like art object, uh, expensive Swiss watches, for example. Um, but also we are discussing um, the tokenization of real estate, which is something very complex to do, um, especially we'll say in, in, in the countries where we have a, a, a real estate register and we need to have notari notarization uh, for, for end over the, the, the real estate but is something that can be done. Here again, we need to educate the regulator and the legislator so that the law will change. And I'm quite sure that in the next years, we will have, um, we will have uh, the, the ability to uh, tokenize also real estate. Right, indeed. So uh, uh, in terms of token uh, for the real estate, uh, what, so uh, within Europe, there are several uh, there are several organizations now offering this kind of service. And so what is the overview of these kind of laws in, in the entire Europe? And uh, how, how soon do you see uh, token uh, tokenization of real estate uh, being mass, mass adopted? Well, as I said, the tokenization of real estate is really complex. And you have, at least in Europe, I would say, um, it's, it's, you can very quickly be qualified as an investment fund. L let me make an example. So let's say that you have a real estate and you say, oh, I want to sell this real estate. And instead of uh, finding one buyer who has, I don't know, 10 millions to buy the real estate, um, I, I do 10 millions of tokens and I want to sell this token for one, uh, one dollar so that uh, everybody can purchase one dollar of of, of, of the real estate. Well, on, on the paper, feasible, um, in reality, uh, if you do so, we have many problems. First of all, who is managing the real estate? Because you have millions of owner, but I mean, you cannot expect this, this owner to managing the real estate. So there, there will be one person which is, or someone who will manage the, the, the real estate. 
And by managing real, real, real estate, you are managing the assets of other and you try to manage it in order to generate revenues by renting the real estate. So this is the classical real estate fund and a real estate fund require an authorization. So you see that if you want to just tokenize a real estate and sell the tokens, you are quite uh, quickly be qualified as a collective investment scheme. Then there is another issue with the real estate is the ownership because normally in order to be owner of the real estate, you need to be registered at the register of, uh, of, 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 of the real estate. And normally there is some kind of form that you have to um, apply and, and fulfill in order to be, um, to be registered as a real estate owner. And of course, we cannot comply with these formalities in the blockchain, at least in Europe. At this moment, it's not possible. I know that there are some countries which are modifying the laws in order to allow this activity. And I think with the years, uh, that will become accessible in, 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 in many states. But today, that's a great obstacle for in, 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 in different countries, and Switzerland is one of that. Right, indeed. So, in terms of uh, these regulations in in in, in, in the entire Europe, which countries do you think are more forward-looking, and where the regulations are very supportive of uh, blockchain and crypto? Um, <laughs> I think that all countries are trying really to to regulate uh, blockchain right now. Uh, I agree that there are some countries which are more advanced than other. And I think we can count between the more advanced countries, uh, countries like uh, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Malta try to be uh, advanced. Um, I know that Luxembourg is also now doing more and more uh, blockchain regulation, but also big countries. I mean, UK is, they, they really want to, 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 be, to, to have blockchain as part of their um, new economy and as a solution also from, from the Brexit. Uh, um, in Germany, there was already the first uh, <clears throat> blockchain bonds, bonds which were issued to the market. So as you can see, there are really all countries that are really trying to, to, to create uh, um, the, the new framework, legal framework, which will all of them to, to use blockchain technology for many kinds of business. So I think that we are in the right direction there. Right, indeed. And is crypto a legal tender in Switzerland? Can it um, <laughs> Allora, um, in Switzerland, we have three levels of, uh, of authorities, the federal, the cantonal, and the uh, municipality. Uh, crypto is not a legal tender on the federal level. Uh, however, on the cantonal level, there are some cantons uh, which are accepting crypto for payment uh, Ticino is one of them, Zug is one of them. And then at, at the municipality level, um, there are also uh, cities which are accepting crypto um, for the payment of uh, uh, especially taxation, but also other uh, services that the, the municipalities are offering. So um, it, I can say that it's not an official legal tender on a federal level, but you can use it uh, even with authorities on uh, depending on uh, where you are. Right, indeed. So, and uh, what are your views and what are what is your vision and how this entire Sorry, miss you. I don't hear you anymore. You're, you're, you were muted, sorry. Uh, was I, was, did my voice break? Yes, yes, it breaks, you were muted. So I couldn't hear okay, the, okay. the question. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So uh, what, what are your views on how blockchain is going to change the life for the common people out there and how this industry is going to revol revolutionize a number of things that it promises? And what is the role of the right regulation to enable that? Yeah, um, I think the, the, the usual person will, will maybe not see a big change in his life, 
but a lot of services that this person will use in the future, they will be blockchain based. Uh, I mean, it's like us, I mean, when we pay with Visa card, we don't understand how it works, how, how the money comes from my account to uh, the merchant accounts. We don't care about it, but it works. And I think this will be the same with blockchain. Um, the people will use it and will not know how it works exactly, but uh, they will just use the service. And why they will use the service? Because, I mean, we know by, by now that blockchain is, is more secure, is faster, it's cheaper than other solutions that there are on the market now. Of course, we have a very expensive traditional infrastructure out there and nobody wants to put this infrastructure by side by investing a lot of money in the new infrastructure. So this, this change will not take over just um, during a day, um, but we will have a lot of new company or also traditional company which start to work with blockchain, which will create a blockchain infrastructure. And once the market sees that this infrastructure is better than the traditional one, there will be this swift in the, in the infrastructure, and there the people will start using blockchain without even knowing that they're using a, a blockchain. Um, I think there will be another part of the population which will use blockchain knowing that it's blockchain, especially in some specific industries. So I'm expecting, for example, to have in the, in the gaming industries to have a lot, a lot of blockchain um, going on there. So NFTs and play to earn and all this stuff. Uh, I really think that it will um, will be wide accepted in, in, in the market also because the gamer are normally young people and they're more open to, 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 to the new technology. Um, in the, the financial uh, marketplace are also another industry which will use a lot of blockchain and there will be a lot of people which will start uh, the, the use of, of the blockchain. Of course, all this transition must be um, followed by also good regulation. That's what we were discussing in the beginning. So we need to educate the, the, the regulator and the lawmaker in order to have uh, uh, laws that allow of us to execute this transition. Right, indeed. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Laj, for coming on the show. It was great to interact with you and learn about the regulations around this industry. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.